Now, what makes Byzantine art different or unique from the rest of the different types of art? The city of Byzantium was a rich trade route. That is why it was also labeled as the gateway of the world due to its location. It's between Asia and Europe. During those times, not only were goods traded, but also ideas. Art techniques were one of them. Byzantine art is unique for it is a mixture of both Eastern and Western art techniques. Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire after the conversion of Constantine the Great. And it was the duty of the emperor to unite the faith across the empire by bringing various heretic or pagan groups into line and standardizing Christian teaching. Therefore, the form of Byzantine art was strictly controlled to eliminate any personalized or unorthodox reinterpretations of its imagery. That is also one unique aspect of Byzantine art. It concentrates on Christian themes. The first type of medieval art form are illuminated manuscripts. An illuminated manuscript is a manuscript in which the text is supplemented with such decorations as initials, borders, and miniature illustrations. In the strictest definition, the term refers only to manuscripts decorated with gold or silver, hence the name illumination or illuminated. Now, most illuminated books, especially made in the first millennium, was gospel books or Bible. Illumination was a complex and costly process. It was usually reserved for special books, an altar Bible, for example. Wealthy people often had richly illuminated books of hours made, which set down prayers appropriate for various times in the liturgical day. Now, most manuscripts were produced in monasteries in order to add to the library or after receiving a commission from a wealthy patron. Now, larger monasteries often contain separate areas for the monks who specializes in illuminated manuscripts, and this room is what you call a scriptorium. Now, this is the process of creating an illuminated manuscript. Our second example of medieval art forms are mosaics. Mosaic is the art of crafting figures with small pieces of colored glass, stone, or other materials. Our example of a mosaic comes from the Basilica of Santa Polina Nuovo in Ravenna, Italy. So as you can see, here's the inside of the church. Here are examples of mosaic pieces on the walls of the church. And here is a closer example of a mosaic coming from the Basilica. The third example of medieval art forms, we have the Bayou Tapestry. The Bayou Tapestry, also known as the La Telle du Conquest in French, is an embroidered cloth nearly 70 meters long and 50 centimeters tall, which depicts the events of the Battle of Hastings concerning William, the Duke of Normandy versus Harold, the Earl of Wessex, as they battle for the crown of England. So here is a closer example of the Bayou Tapestry. The Bayou Tapestry is said to date to the 11th century, within a few years after the battle. As I have shared to you on the previous slide, the Bayou Tapestry basically narrates the battle between William and Harold, wherein the latter, Harold, won the crown of England. But it is the former William, the Duke of Normandy, the loser, basically, 
who commissioned for the creation of the Bayou Tapestry. And if you would look at the end of the Bayou Tapestry, according to William's point of view, it is he who won the battle and not Harold. Our last example of medieval art form is heraldry. Heraldry is the manner of designing coat of arms and insignia. On the right side is an example of the coat of arms of the Republic of the Philippines. Now, what is the meaning of our country's coat of arms? Now, our coat of arms features the eight-rayed sun of the Philippines, with each ray representing the eight provinces, Batangas, Bulacan, Cavite, Manila, Laguna, Nueva Ecija, Pampanga, and Tarla, which were placed under martial law by Governor General Ramon Blanco during the Philippine Revolution. And the three five-pointed stars representing the three primary geographic regions of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. On the blue field, on the Dexter side, you would see the North American bald eagle of the United States. And on the red field on the sinister side is the lion rampant of the coat of arms of the kingdom of Leon, both representing the country's colonial past, which is ironic because our coat of arms, an independent nation, features two uh, symbols coming from our colonial past. Now, the curve in arms, which shares many features of the national flag, was designed by the Filipino artist and heraldist, Captain Galo B. Ocampo. And now we have the golden age of Western European art, Renaissance art. Now, what does the word Renaissance mean? Renaissance period marks the pinnacle of artistic development in Western European art of the late 14th, 15th, and early 16th centuries. The word Renaissance means rebirth, a rebirth of the classical ideals from ancient Rome and Greece. Here are some famous Renaissance artists and their masterpieces. Our first Renaissance artist is Donatello. His first work, you have Saint Mark, a marble statue that stands approximately 7 feet and 9 inches high and is displayed in the Museum of the Or San Miguel Church in Florence, Italy. His second work, we have David, a bronze statue in display at Museo Nazionale del Bargello in Florence, Italy. And his last example of work, the equestrian statue of Catamilata, which is located in the Piazza del Santo in Padua, Italy. Our second Renaissance artist, you have Giotto di Bondone. His first work, Ogni Santi Madonna, housed in the Uffici Gallery of Florence, Italy. His second work, Stefaneschi Triptych, commissioned by Cardinal Giacomo Gaetani Stefaneschi to serve as an altarpiece for one of the altars of Old St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, it is now at the Pinacoteca Vaticana in Rome, Italy. Our third Renaissance artist, Leon Battista Alberti. His first work, you have the Basilica of Santa Maria Novella, commissioned by Giovanni Di Paolo Rossellai, a local textile merchant. Leon Battista Alberti designed the upper part of the inlaid green marble of Prato, also called Serpentino, and white marble facade of the church. His second work, you have the Palazzo Rusilai, a palatial 15th century townhouse on the Via della Vigna Nuova in Florence, Italy. The Rusilai Palace is believed by most scholars to have been designed by Giovanni di Paolo Rusilai. Our fourth Renaissance artist, we have Giovanni Simabue. His first work, The Last Supper, and his second work, The Maesta di Santa Trinita. Originally painted for the Church of Santa Trinita, Florence, Italy, where it remained until 1471. It is now housed in the Uffizi Gallery of Florence, Italy. Our fifth Renaissance artist, we have Filippo Brunelleschi. His first work, Ospedale degli Innocenti. 
It is a historic building in Florence. It, it, it was designed by Brunelleschi, who received the commission in 1419 from the Arte del Yaceta. It was originally a children's orphanage. Our second example of this work is the Barbadori Chapel. It is a chapel in the Church of Santa Felicita in Florence, Central Italy. Our sixth Renaissance artist is Fra Angelico. His first work, the San Marco Altarpiece. It was commissioned by Cosimo de' Medici the Elder and is currently housed in the San Marco Museum of Florence, Italy. His second work, the Annunciation of Cortona, is a panel painting altarpiece or retable by Fra Angelico, once housed in the Church of Jesu of Cortona. It is now held at the Museo de Isesano in Cortona. Our last Renaissance artist, Lorenzo Ghiberti. His first work, The Gates of Paradise. This piece won the 1401 competition for the first set of bronze doors, with Brunelleschi as the runner-up. The original plan was for the doors to depict scenes from the Old Testament, but the plan was changed to depict scenes from the New Testament instead. And his second work, the St. Matthew bronze statue. The statue was funded by the Arte del Cambio Guild, a.k.a. the Bankers Guild. Students, thank you very much for listening and I will see you on our next topic. Please do not forget to check the activity for Chapter 3, Western Art History. It is already uploaded in your Google Classroom.